Welcome to Tony Barnes View with news you can use. Tony has over 32 years of experience as a chartered financial planner and wealth manager. Tony's passion is to help you retire early and live the life of your dreams with no financial worries. Now to today's episode. Why timing the market really works and what to do about it. I've often been asked by clients over the years whether or not now is a good time to invest. My stock answer is that it is virtually impossible to time the market and that it is the time in the market, not the timing of the market, which is likely to produce the best investment returns. This strategy is perfectly illustrated by a graph produced by Fidelity a while ago. It's staggering to think that by not being invested in the market for a relatively small number of days, what a huge impact it has on reducing investment returns. So what the graph shows is an investment of £10,000 into the S&P 500 index, which is the index of US top US shares, between the periods of 1st of January 1980 until 31st of March 2020. Admittedly, quite a long period that, just over 40 years. Nonetheless, the figures that you will hear are quite astounding. So it assumes an investment of just $10,000. And just remember these figures that I'm going to throw at you now without the benefit of demonstrating it on a graph. So if you'd remained invested for the entire period, which is 40 years and three months, then your $10,000 would have grown to $697,421, which of course sounds like an extraordinary sum, but of course that's the benefit of compounding, isn't it? So just remember that, just under £700,000 over 40 years from a $10,000 investment. Now, if you'd missed being invested in the market for just the best five days, then that return of almost £700,000 falls to 432000 Quite a huge uh, reduction, I think you'll agree. Now, if you'd missed the best 10 days, the figure falls even more to 313377 So remember, without missing any days in the market, it was nearly 700000 Now you're down to just over 300000 missing the best 10 days. If you'd missed the best 30 days, your investment wouldn't have reached 697000 It would have reached 115481 And missing just 50 days in, in a 40-year-plus period would have reduced your returns to £48,434. Now, that's still quite a big gain, isn't it? Uh, from £10,000 to £48,000. But if you'd just remained invested on those 50 days in that 40 years and three months period, then instead of returning £48,434, you would have made £697,421. Now, a few things to comment on these figures. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. The hypothetical example assumes an investment that tracks the returns of an S&P 500 index and includes dividend reinvestment, but does not reflect the impact of taxes, which would lower these figures. The best days were determined by ranking the one-day total returns of the S&P index within this time period and ranking them from highest to lowest. There is volatility in the market and a sale at any point in time could result in a gain or loss. Your own investment experience would differ, including the possibility of losing money. And the source of that is Bloomberg, as at 31st of March 2020. It's said that only fools and geniuses get the timing right of when to buy and sell investments. The truth is nobody can get the timing right regularly, because not even, not even fools and geniuses can get it right. The reason why, as put so eloquently by the great Warren Buffett, is because the market can remain irrational much longer than I can remain solvent. So even when you believe prices are very high, irrationally high, you could still be wrong selling because prices could remain high for years to come. 
You could argue that such irrationality is already happening. At the time of writing this blog, cryptocurrencies and US technology shares are arguably in a price bubble. Many of them have reached sky-high valuations such as Dogecoin and Tesla. Cryptocurrencies have risen to implausibly high valuations with Dogecoin up 7,500% this year to date. Tesla's share price is on a P.E. ratio of 637, which is about 40 times more expensive than an average U.S. stock with a reasonable P.E. ratio of, say, 16. The U.S. stock market is valued at more than double its fair value, according to Warren Buffett's own stock market valuation metric. However, most of the overvaluation of U.S. stocks is in the technology sector, especially the giant tech shares of companies such as Google, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix and Microsoft, which represents more than 25% of the total value of the US stock market as measured by the S&P 500 index. So while Fidelity's study has merit about remaining invested and not withdrawing your money from the market, there is equally an argument that selling when assets appear to be in a bubble could be quite prudent by banking some profits. You may not get the exact timing right, meaning you could be giving up further profits, but deciding to bank a healthy profit is never a bad thing. Then when the market crash eventually happens, you can buy back those same assets you sold at much lower prices, i.e. at discounted rates. You know it makes sense. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to share it with your friends and family. For more information, head to www.wealthandtax.co.uk.